down to a team that we think is going to be really on the upswing and was very young and talented last year in Camel Memorial. Talk about the Red Devils, what this young talent is, and, and, and some of the things that they're returning to that beautiful turf field that they have down in Camel. Yeah, looking at Campbell, I mean, they're really interesting this year because of how young they were last year. Um, some players that they lost, James Schaefer, Deshaun Bell, Christian Storage, Jamal Henderson. Players that I have uh, have listed to watch is Dylan Henderson, who's going to be coming into his sophomore year, and Christian James coming in to his senior year. Um, this is a Red Devils team, won two games last year. And they, they did that, too, all while scoring under 10 points a game in offense. And if that teaches you anything about what they were able to do defensively, uh, that, that's that's a big step for uh, for Campbell. We'll go into their defense later, but we'll talk a little bit about the offense. This is the one area where Campbell needs to figure out how to score touchdowns or yeah. just get points on the board. And the one thing about their offense, and just to interrupt you real quick, they didn't score a lot, but they moved the ball a lot, so they just couldn't finish drives. I mean, they, they exactly, and it, it comes down to just getting points on the board because the defenses are able, your defense is able to keep you in a lot of these games. It's about getting that six on the board, getting that three even on the board if you. You can, but I mean, in this for for the offense this year, I'm looking for them to convert those field goals into touchdowns this year. Uh, have a little bit more of those drives that end uh, with a punt, end in a field goal. Try to get that next step and make sure you're uh, ending up with points on the board uh, any way that you can. There's some guys to look out for though that are going to be uh, interesting. Brian Robinson is a sophomore quarterback. He's going to be competing for quarterback. Uh, looks like he might have a, a good shot at it as well with uh, Christian Stores no longer there. Uh, Jamal Henderson's going to be interesting on that all offensive line as well as Craig Kern, Benny Ortiz. Uh, you got an and uh, Malachi Taylor too. I uh, Malachi Taylor. I, I excuse me. Uh, also, f- so four very good offensive linemen. I think they're all juniors too. You got some pieces here, and then you also have Jamal, uh, not uh, Jamal Dylan Henderson. Excuse me. Uh, running back, sophomore running back that looks to have a lot of promise. They have six returning starters last year. A lot of them were uh, sophomores and freshmen, even even too. It was a very young team. It has another year of experience. I think they're still maybe a year away from taking a huge step, but I expect a step from uh, from Campbell Memorial this year on offense. I promise you, Campbell has the playmakers to to make offense score a lot more than 10, 10 points a game. I'll tell you that much. And it starts and ends with that offensive line too. They have the protection up front, uh, an offensive line that's going to give them some time, give the quarterback some time to throw and create holes for the running back Dylan Henderson. It's just can can they convert those when they get in the red zone within that twenty yards? Can they convert it into touchdowns and not be held up there? Situational football is going to be so important, and we talk about situational hitting in baseball, but situational football can really break a young team, and, and they're still going to be overall pretty young. A lot of sophomores and juniors, uh, more experienced than last year, but still they're going to have to lean on uh, their their seniors and their juniors to really lead that team, not just uh, emotionally, but also lead them by example and set that standard. So the playmakers that are co- returning sophomores or the incoming freshmen can really step up and, and understand what it takes to, to succeed. Yeah, and I mean, Dylan Henderson, a type of guy, too, averaged just over, I think, four yards a carry last year, too, just under five, about four that's and a half so yards impressive. per carry. And so I mean, impressive. and I mean that, that's, a, that's a guy, too, that's just going to wear down a defense. And you expect that average to go up a little bit more with the offensive line getting another year of experience under their belt. He's just a guy that's just going to wear down that defensive line as it goes on. And then by the third, fourth quarter, you're going to see that defensive line maybe not make a tackle that they need to or maybe miss an assignment that they were supposed to get, you know. And, and all it takes, too, is just getting that guy that's just going to keep on consistently pounding through the line, going on the outside when they're not expecting it. And I, I think that's what uh, is interesting and intriguing about Campbell Memorial. If, if the defense misses one gap, Henderson's gone. Yeah. And, I mean, looking at – uh, Memorial's defense, too, and this is what's interesting because they got four returning starters on it. Uh, Dylan Henderson plays defensive back. Jamal Henderson plays linebacker. Michael Henderson plays defensive line. And Malichi and Taylor plays play is strong in Campbell. Yeah. <laughs> and Malichi play, plays linebacker. So they have they have some pieces, too, on defense. It's a defense that, that was allowing over 30 a game last year, and a lot of that came from those turnovers, too. And a little bit came from it, too, where they would go for it, fourth down situation, 
goal line, goal line trying to get that touchdown, get that. They turn the ball over, and immediately the other team is able to get it down the field and score. It was just more possession time that went into the other team's favor because turnovers like that because you're trying to score four scores in. Um, but this is still a defense in Campbell Memorial that could compete with some of the best of them and create turnovers too. We talked about it defensive back-wise. They have some good linebackers in Jamal Henderson and Malichi Taylor, Michael Henderson up front, Dylan Henderson in the defensive backfield in the secondary. I mean, they got pieces everywhere to build around. They got essentially team captains all over the defensive field to kind of go to and say, that's your guy to, to talk to. That's the guy. That's your captain of the linebackers. That's your defensive line captain, your secondary captain. I mean, you could basically have your leaders set up for your defense going forward. And these are good guys that played both sides of the ball, found success at a very young age. A lot of them were sophomores and freshmen even going into this year, and they're going to just help those younger guys also progress as they progress themselves. I, I really like Campbell's secondary. Uh, I really like their their ability to get off the ball. Uh, they don't get beat one-on-one too often. They're so athletic. And once again, like a lot of the other positions in Campbell, one year of experience equals learning more and more. I really like their secondary. I don't think it's going to be really easy to air it out against the Red Devils. No, I don't think so either. Um, I think a lot of teams are going to definitely be uh, be cautious of the Hendersons all over the place defensively, but uh, but especially uh, a linebacker and uh, and defensive back wise because I mean their linebackers can play the pass pretty well as well. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what uh, Campbell comes with and if they take that next step with a year of experience under their belt. Now uh, I, I'm looking for them to take that next step. Let's dive into Campbell's schedule and some of the games that are going to be important for them in the 2021 season. Going through Campbell's schedule, starting off August 20th, they're home versus Valley Christian. 27th, they're at Lowville. Starting in September 3rd, they're home versus East Palestine. September 10th, at Crestview. 17th, at Brookfield. 24th, home versus Liberty. October 1st, home versus Garrettsville Garfield. 8th, at Champion. 15th, home versus Newton Falls. And 22nd, at LeBray. And I mean, looking at this schedule, Newton Falls is going to be, I think, a pretty big game towards the end of the season, October 15th. But I'm really looking at that September 24th, week six game against Liberty, because I think that's going to be the game. These are the two teams that I think are going to be making steps this season uh, that might determine who uh, who might have a shot at the playoffs come the end of the season and who might uh, who might be out of contention or who might be uh, who might have a longer road or a taller task ahead of them if they lose that September 24th game. Yeah, and games in September can come down to how well you prepared in the summer. I mean, uh, you know, the, the first three games and all of a sudden you're into, into September, September 24th. I know it's technically the end of September. But at the same time, that can really be an important month of the season for, for a team. Especially, yeah, and especially that end of September right before you get into October where it can be cold. Sometimes it's not, but, I mean, we've seen snow in October before too. So, I mean, it's really that last time too, that end of September, early October, where you really get that warmer weather and you really feel more comfortable passing the ball a lot more and you don't have to deal with the uh, the weather uh, aspect as much. Uh, you t- typically see teams go with a little bit more running approach. Even the passing teams uh, run the ball a little bit more come uh, late October, mid October months but yeah looking at that Liberty game for Liberty and Campbell Memorial it's definitely I think going to be a game that uh, both teams look at and say if we win this game we might have a good shot at at making the playoffs two teams that are going to be really close in the standings we expect them to have the same kind of projection so it's going to be interesting to see what they do going up against each other because whoever wins that game is going to have separation uh, with the other one Absolutely. And like I said, playoff implications could be on the line come that time too. middle of the season could be a big game. We don't know how teams are, are going to be shaping out. But looking at the schedule before that Liberty game, I mean, Valley Christian, Lobo, East Palestine, Crestview, Crestview, Brookfield, up and down with that schedule. You got some really tough games. You have some games that are going to be competitive and games that can be winnable for you. Uh, so, I mean, but there's going to be some tall tasks there. Crestview and Brookfield before that Liberty game. You open the MVAC with Crestview Brookfield, you know, yeah, top two teams, top top two back to back. But I mean, if anything, if you could try to take a positive from that, you hope that competing up against those higher up teams, 
get you ready for that Liberty game because you know that Liberty game is going to be big. And who knows? I mean, if Crestview or Brookfield isn't on their uh, their best days, you might be able to sneak a game away and, and pull off an upset. I'd honestly rather see them uh, earlier in the season than late. Like I would not want to play Brookfield, Crestview, LeBray, the, the, those stretch of games in the weeks 8, 9, and 10. Because then they are really gearing for the playoffs, and they're up, and they're they're they've they've fixed all their kinks, and they're ready to go. I'd rather see them in week four or five, to be honest. I I think Mo- Campbell Memorial has the best first five games of the schedule as far as they will know w- exactly where they stand come that big Liberty game. I think they will know exactly how the season looks out. They'll have that blueprint for them. Um, they know going into the next few games, you got Liberty, Garrettsville, Garfield, Champion, Newton Falls, Labray. You know what's ahead of you. You know there's going to be some competition, but you're going to know wins losses wise. If I win this game against Liberty, the sixth game of the season, where am I going to be sitting at? Am I four and two? Am I three and three? Am I two and four? Where am I going to be at uh, wins loss wise? And give you that kind of uh, that blueprint and that map for the rest of the season and how you want to go about it. Yeah. And and when I look at Camel, I just, I really think they're going to have something to say, especially, you know, that they're going to be a team that, can really throw a monkey wrench into this in VAC and maybe beat some teams that might look over them a little bit and think that they're going to be a stepping over the Sunday paper, but it's not going to be that this year. And Camel might surprise some people with some upset wins this year. Yeah. And, and like I said too, that Brookfield and Crestview game, those are two games where if, if Crestview and Brookfield aren't having their best day or there, or there's some unfortunate turnovers in the game, Memorial can take advantage of that and they can, they can pull off an upset. If they split those two, they'll be sitting really pretty going into that Liberty game. You would you would think too, with the way that plays out, you would you would think if you split one of those two, you're looking at it. You would think three wins, two to three wins at the very least. You would think around that time. So yeah, that Liberty game would be interesting. But again, we don't know until we start seeing what these teams are are showcasing. Anybody can beat anyone on any given uh, Friday night in in Ohio. So. Uh, yeah, it's it's any given Friday. Instead of Al Pacino, it's starring me and Ty. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's Anthony, <laughs> Anthony and Ty. <laughs> oh my gosh! Instead of Chris Rock and Al Pacino, it's Anthony and Ty Bartel doing anything <laughs> any given Friday. The knockoff B movie. 